To run a successful business, you need to track the right metrics. So today, we're gonna give you 15 essential metrics for your business. But first, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all of the videos like this one we have coming out. All right, let's start off by defining business metrics in key performance indicators, AKA KPIs. These are measurable values that can help track a business's performance and its goals over time. Number one is website traffic, but don't just look at plain traffic. Get granular and look at metrics like month over month traffic. Traffic metrics will help you check if your marketing efforts are providing the results you're looking for. Some other good traffic metrics are sources, new versus returning visitors, location, session length, and bounce rate. But remember that traffic by itself means nothing. You need that traffic to be converting. These next couple metrics will help you track that. Number two, leads per month. Leads per month are the number of people who sign up every single month. This sign up could come from a lead magnet, a demo, a webinar, or a consultation call. Choose one that makes sense for your goals. Once you know the number of leads you generate per month, you'll know how much traffic you need to be bringing in each month. That takes us to the conversion rate. Not all leads will convert to sales, so you also need to track leads to sales conversion rate. It's the number of sales divided by the number of leads multiplied by 100. So if you generate 20 sales from 50 leads per month, your conversion rate will be 40% which is pretty good. And if you think this video is pretty good, give us a thumbs up. All right, next up is return on ad spend or ROAS. It's the amount you earn from purchases divided by the advertising spend. For example, if you generate $1,000 and spend $200 on social media advertising, your ROAS will be five. In other words, for every dollar you invest, you'll generate $5. Knowing your ROAS helps you predict how much money you might earn from your advertising efforts. You can use it to set the right advertising budget and make sure it's meeting your goals. Number five, customer acquisition cost or CAC. It's the total cost of sales and marketing over a specific period of time to acquire a customer. You can calculate CAC by taking the total marketing spend and sales over a time period and dividing that number by the total number of customers acquired. The resulting cost to acquire one customer is way more accurate than just one marketing metric. Number six, customer retention rate. It's the percentage of customers retained by your company over a set time frame. With so many companies now offering some sort of subscription, this metric is super hot. Here's how you can calculate it. First, take the number of total customers at the end of a period. Next, subtract the number of new customers acquired during that period. After that, divide this number by the number of customers at the start of that period. Finally, multiply it by 100. Oof, keeping up? Maybe grab a glass of water because we're about to get into some really good stuff. Number seven, customer lifetime value. Customer lifetime value or CLV is the metric that helps predict the total revenue your business generates from a single customer over the lifetime of that customer. You can calculate CLV by subtracting the cost of serving and acquiring a customer from revenue generated from that customer. Use this metric to see if all of those marketing campaigns and servicing costs actually generate profits. As you know, it costs less to keep a customer than it does to acquire a new one. So knowing it's CLV and having a high CLV is a great sign. Next up is Net Promoter Score or NPS. This is a business metric that helps you measure customers' relationship with your company. Your customers answer a key question with the answer on a scale from one to 10. After getting the responses, you subtract the percentage of detractors from the percentage of promoters to get the net promoter score. The scores can range from negative 100 to plus 100. The detractors give you more negatives and the promoters give you more positives. The goal is to get as close to positive 100 as possible. Number nine, net profit margin. Net profit margin is the metric to measure profitability. Here's how you can calculate it. First, let's figure out your net income. It's the cost of the selling price minus marketing fees, labor cost, product development, taxes, and any other deductions. You then divide the result by your revenue and multiply it by 100. If you want your business to stay in the game, this is one of the most important metrics for you to track. Also, if you're digging this video, go ahead and give us a little thumbs up. It's one of our metrics that we're tracking. And now, number 10. Tracking monthly and yearly sales growth will help you check if your business's revenue is actually growing. To calculate monthly sales growth, subtract month number two's total sales revenue from month number one's total sales revenue. Then you divide it by month number one's revenue and multiply it by 100. Number 11, cash flow. On to that cash money metric, cash flow. 
It is simply the amount of net money being transferred into or out of your business. This transfer can occur through the products or services you sell, the companies you acquire, or by raising cash. Cash flow will help you determine how well your business can pay its employees, shareholders, and invest back into its business. Cue the Lil Wayne song. Number 12, overhead costs. These are business costs that aren't directly related to the creating of products or services. They can be categorized as either fixed, variable, or a fixed variable hybrid. Fixed overhead costs include payments such as insurance or rent. Variable overhead costs include expenses such as utilities and office supplies. Hybrid costs have a base fixed amount that can go up or down, which is where the variable element comes in. An example is salaries. You'll have a fixed amount in your employee's contract, but you might need to pay extra for overtime work or bonuses. Number 13, training cost per employee. This metric name says it all. It's about the amount it costs to onboard a new employee. Employees need to go through a training phase. Keep in mind, you will not just pay someone to train the employee, you will also pay the new hires for their salaries. Number 14, employee happiness. Everyone just wants to be happy, right? In life, we have too many metrics to measure happiness, but luckily in business, it's a little easier. Employee satisfaction is a metric used to determine how happy or satisfied employees are with their job. This metric factors in workload, compensation, work-life balance, and satisfaction with management. Just like the net promoter score for your customers, you can use a similar survey to measure your employee satisfaction and happiness. Last but certainly not least is employee engagement. This metric takes happiness and other factors like company passion and loyalty into consideration. It also looks at willingness to help the company grow. Employee engagement is a useful metric because it helps determine employee productivity and effort. Engaged employees will feel like they're actually part of your business and they will naturally help generate word of mouth. And there you have it, 15 business metrics that are essential to growing your business. If you wanna know how to track these metrics or what project management tools to use, ring that subscribe bell. We have plenty of videos out there to help you grow your business and take it to the next level.